Hello everybody, welcome again to another episode of Building Site. Uh, today we're going to deploy the Pet Store API um, and we're go going to implement one of the Pet Store operations. So this shouldn't take too long because with Site, building APIs uh, is super quick. Well, that's the intention. So I want to show you a new version of, uh, this is a, an empty local Site instance. I can tell that it's local because here it tells me that my, uh, my URI map is mapped to localhost. Okay? You can use this site tool to configure rem remote machines. And a remote machine, you would only have the client secret. Well, this needs to be initialized, so this will have a, the client secret. And at the moment, there's nothing in this site database. So I'm going to initialize it. And this should bootstrap it with enough that we can authenticate with this client secret using the OAuth2 client credentials grant. So we'll copy and paste this, uh, and this client secret might be the thing that you start with if you're, remote, if you're configuring uh, a remote instance of site that somebody's just set up for you. Um, so I've got a client secret. I can now have got an access token. I can check the token. That's all good. So now we want to be able to have an, a, a system API. So I'm going to install just enough that I can see my system API um, in, in a Swagger UI tool. So I'm going to do that. So here's, uh, we're going to install a, a bundle called site system API open API. Okay, so now we can go and have a, a look at that. That's a, uh, we'll take any Swagger UI, we'll take one at petstore.swagger.io and we'll just change that to our local host. And here's our system API. Now, if we try one of the methods, we'll find that we'll get 401, which means we haven't authorized. We can click on this authorized button here, um, and we can choose implicit. Uh, and we'll put in, say, a Swagger uh, client ID. We haven't registered that yet, so that should fail. And if you look at the URL here, it's going to a, uh, an authorize endpoint that doesn't exist yet because we haven't installed one. So let's install one. Jump to site. This one is called OAuth authorization endpoint. All these instructions are in the site PDF in the book. Um, so don't worry if uh, you don't have to learn them all. Um, here I've got a choice. I can either decide to make this password base and use a login form, uh, or I can uh, elect to authenticating with other mechanisms. Um, this is one area of user choice, which is why we can't make this choice for you when you initialize site. This is something you have to do. So let's make this uh, password based. And we refresh that. Doesn't look like anything has happened, but in fact, it has. It's trying to log in with a form, um, and this form doesn't exist. So let's just install a form here. Site. Here's one I did for you, but you might want to install your own brand of form. My one is very, very primitive. So uh, before we go further, I need to register a user for this uh, that I can log in as. Um, so I'm going to uh, uh, register a new user. Um, I'll make a username Mel. Uh, I can put anything I like in here. I'll put my full name, my email. Again, this is schemaless. You can put anything you like in these fields. But username is special, as is password. Uh, and I'm going to make my password foobar for simplicity. OK, I've registered that. Before I do one more thing, and remember, I'm, I am the site CLI. So I'm going to assign Mal a role of admin. This is a special role that is configured in site. Um, and it's completely up to you. I mean, you can comp you can configure site right down at the bottom where you can choose your own roles. But uh, I've kind of pre-configured it with some useful ones. So here's one. Uh, now I should be able to request a token, which is kind of like logging in. And this way, I'm going to request a token as user mail. Ask me for my password, which was foobar. And I can check now, check the token. Um, and I can say, who am I? Uh, I'm Mal. That's great. So I should be able to log in here with the same token. 
Uh, but bear in mind, there's one thing that I have to do, and that is to register this um, or register this client. And I can do that with yet another, I'm going to say, system client. This is the the client registration that represents this Swagger UI. Uh, so I'm going to call it Swagger UI. Okay. Uh, now I can log in finally, and we've logged in. I can close that box, and I can re-execute. Who am I? And I will say, okay, well, I should be Mal down here. These are all the operations, by the way, that I have access to. Uh, and in fact, I can do the same here with who am I minus a V. Um, and then down here, you can see all the operations. Uh, I can also do things like API endpoints, find all of the API endpoints that I can access. Um, it's quite useful, the introspection. Uh, I can also look at all the logs. Uh, I can see all the events that have happened. Uh, this is really cool because I can inspect, see who has done what in the system. Every single piece of data inside is protected. Um, you know, the only way of manipulating any records or any facts inside is to go through an operation. That's why operations are so important. And it's in the operations that we decide who's allowed to do what. Okay, now we want to install a pet store API. So I'm going to uh, install a, um, a new API endpoint called, I don't think we have it here, oh yes we do, Open APIs uh, API. So I should be able to, uh, I want to post an API and we've got a, a utility that allows you to do that. It's called install uh, Open API and I give it the, uh, this time I'm going to give it the demo pet store open api.json. Okay, so that's installed now. So if we go back to our browser here, and instead of site, I can now change this to pet store. And here's the pet store. Okay, so what we want to do is add a pet. So I'm going to try this one out. Now I have to uh, create, uh, let's authorize again. Um, so I'm going to create a fictional user called Alice. So let's do that. And just to user Alice, um, uh, uh, username Alice, we'll give it the same password, the full name of Alice. I can now look at, these are my users. Um, and I'm going to give Alice a, a, a role, which I've set up as the pet store pet store owner so assign role username alice role pet store owner okay now we can sort of because i'm local i can actually have a look and see where those uh, and i've got a role assignment here uh, this is saying alice is a pet store owner but we don't actually have a role pet store owner this is just a an assignment to something that doesn't exist so i'm going to uh, installed some of the operations that I've written already for post uh, add a pet and, the, and that contains the roles as well. So let's have a look at this. We're going to post this into our system and of course we will get a 500 because we haven't got the role. Uh, well, we haven't got the role and we haven't authorized it and we haven't, more to the point, we haven't got the operation. So the operation doesn't exist so we don't know whether, you know, whether this op operation is available publicly or privately or, or what. So let's just install that then. Install demo pet store operations. Okay, now when we re-execute that, 401, we haven't authorized. So that's obviously protected. So let's authorize now as Alice. We can put in our uh, Swagger UI. Um, uh, okay, I might have uh, it might have cached. Uh, let's just see whether we can execute that. Um, that same 403, I think it's because I've logged in as Mal. So if I just assign that uh, role to Mal as well, we can uh, we can execute that. And that's now 200. Right, so if you look where that's gone, let's have a look at the operation that we, uh, now one way of finding the operation is to have a look at the original JSON here, and if we scroll down to the paths, we can see uh, what we do. 
pets. Uh, there'll be a, here we are. That's the operation. I can have a look at that. Let's just copy that and do site find that operation. And here, here's the operation. Now I need to load it up in Emacs really to sort of show you what that operation looks like. Um, these are all in this big installer tree. Uh, so this one is operations um, pet store add pet. Okay, so this is the, the implementation of the add pet. And you can see what it does is create a document um, with these, these IDs uh, and it takes the ID of the incoming um, document. Now I could I could do some JSON schema validation here. Uh, I can check to make sure that it's the, the input is is correct and sanitize it. There's all sorts of things I can do here. But essentially what I'm doing is creating a little um, preparation, a, pre a prepared doc, which this transact is going to put into the XDDB database for us. So not a lot of code. So let's have a look at let's say site find pets. Uh, I think that was pet pets 10. There's our pet. Well, let's try it again. Uh, let's try now with putting the name Cooper. I will have to change the ID. So Cooper is Joanna's dog. Uh, let's try again. Let's put in, uh, we have a cat called Aria. So let's put this one. Brilliant. And oh, put that in as uh, 11. I'll put Cooper in as 12 again. Now, bear in mind, we haven't lost that original thing because it was the bi-temporal database. That was just a, a mistake, and we might want to go and just rectify that mistake. It's OK. When you have a bi-temporal database, these mistakes don't matter so much. Uh, let's put in another dog. Let's put in Rowan. Execute now. So now let's go and find these pets in our database. So here we are. These are our pets. And here's Rowan. So I hope that shows you how easy it is to create an API in Sight. Uh, there is a bit of work that you have to do. You have to create these operations. Um, but if you think all the things that you didn't have to do to implement this API, the, the security, the registering of clients, all the OAuth2 stuff, the access control, um, the uh, working with the database, the setting up, the provisioning, all of that is done for you in Sight. Uh, while it still gives you all the flexibility that you can write very, very bespoke business logic. So I hope that gives you uh, an indication of how far things are coming along with Site and how close it is to being ready to use. All right, thanks very much for watching. Uh, have a great day and see you soon.